All right, guys, the dual clutch automatic DPS6 transmission. I want to talk about every single issue I've ever seen on one of these. Let's just say every issue I've seen more than once. So it's going to be quite a few if you're ready. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just go down a list of every possible code for the transmission and pick the ones I've seen multiple times and explain them. I'm also going to explain symptoms as well and how to fix those. If you have any of these codes, P060 something, particularly the 606 there, uh, that's more than likely going to be a TCM failure. But it, if you want to exhaust all options, go ahead and do the ground cleaning procedure first. Load test the battery, test the alternator, make sure the charging system is working okay. I've seen range sensor codes like these maybe twice, two or three times in the past 10 years. I'm going to say to fix that, inspect the harness visually on the transmission. The range sensor is on top. Just look at the wires, make sure they're not damaged or, or eaten up from a mouse. And then replace the range sensor and see if that fixes it. It's a really cheap sensor and it's held in with two bolts and it has one connector on it. So might as well try that. And if it doesn't fix it, then replace the TCM. Okay, I've definitely seen output shaft speed sensor codes before. And that's going to be one of two things. It's going to be the output shaft speed sensor or the pigtail is going to have chewed wires right next to it. That is the sensor that's on the bottom of the transmission by the right-hand axle. And it's from the factory. It has a uh, like a silver wrap around it, so it'll be obvious. Okay, and I have seen these codes before. The PO72s, stuck in reverse, stuck in gear one, two through six there. Uh, I'll, I'll go through those one more time for you there. Pretty much in this situation, if you have these codes, it's telling you that... Uh, the TCM is not able to pull the transmission out of a certain gear, and it's going to tell you to uh, tear the transmission down and inspect the shift drum, synchronizers and all that, and uh, if you don't see anything wrong, then it's a TCM issue. Now, instead of tearing the transmission down, you could start with a TCM. However, if you hear a synchronizer grinding, then it's probably too late and it's probably a synchronizer issue. Okay, now here's the PO74 codes, unable to engage certain gears. There's uh, all the way down to 6 right there, PO74, uh, A, B, C, D, E. That's when the motor on the TCM turns, one of the two motors, to engage the shift drum and change gears, but it's not able to uh, engage a certain gear. Now once again, same with the PO73s. If you hear a grinding or something obvious like that, then you've got a damaged synchronizer. Otherwise, you may have a bad TCM, and that would be a decent place to start there. Okay, then we have the PO7As, PO7A3, 4, and 5. That's telling you that the uh, clutch, a certain clutch is stuck applied, or it has a performance issue during an application. When I see these codes, most of the time it ends up being a seizing clutch fork. But if you have one or other of these codes here for A or B, you can take the upper and lower clutch actuator and swap it to the positions to see if the code transfers to the other clutch. If it does, it's a bad clutch actuator. It's seized. If it doesn't, then you probably have a clutch fork issue. You can test a clutch fork by turning it by hand with the release tool. I have videos for all that on how to do that. Clutch position sensor circuit codes. PO806, 809, 87A, 87B, 87E. The first thing I suspect there would be a clutch actuator. The, the two motors on the transmission for the clutch, the clutch actuator motors. That's what I suspect first on that there. You can always swap the A and B motors around and see if the code transfers to the opposite clutch once again. Also, make sure the grounds are cleaned and tight. I have a ground cleaning procedure video you can follow. Okay, 882, 883, and 884, I've seen that before. Power input signal low to the TCM. Make sure your battery is in good condition and it has, it passes a load test. It doesn't have a, a dead cell in it or anything. Also, make sure your alternator is working properly. Just uh, look up how to test an alternator if you're not sure. Also, make sure all the grounds are in good condition and clean to the TCM. All right, now we have actuator codes, PO902, PO90C. If you have the 902 or if you have the 90C, that's either a TCM or a, a clutch actuator. If you have a 2017 or 2018 focus with these codes, the 90C or 902, it's probably a clutch actuator that's failed. 
if you have an older Focus, 2012 through 2016, early 2016 model, then it's probably a TCM. But once again, for either of these codes, any of these codes here, uh, the nine zeros, you can change the position of the upper and lower actuators and see if the code transfers, and that'll help you diagnose whether or not it's an, a clutch actuator issue or a TCM issue. Uh, depending on the code here, if it's a 90D or a 90B, something like that, you may also pay extra close attention for damaged wiring down to the actuators. P1934, just likely an issue with the output shaft speed sensor once again. Like I said before, with the 720 and all that, just um, inspect the output shaft speed sensor for that. Friction element applied time ranger performance, 2700 or 2701. Once again, swap upper and lower actuators and see if the issue transfers. That'll tell you whether or not it's an actuator motor issue. If that doesn't transfer, turn the clutches by hand. Make sure the forks are okay. If the forks feel okay, try to turn them counterclockwise. Just put very minimal pressure on them in the fully released position, and they should not go clockwise once they're fully released. If they do, then the bearing in the uh, fork is coming apart. And if you swap the motors and the concern doesn't transfer, then and the clutch fork feels good, then you may have a sticking slave cylinder bearing. So you may need to do a teardown and inspect the clutch and components. Turbine shaft speed sensor B. There are two sensors on the side of the transmission. Make sure that the wiring is not frayed on the end of the connector to them. If they're not, replace both of the connectors on the side, I'm sorry, both of the sensors on the side of the transmission. Uh, intermediate, I'm sorry, uh, intermediate shaft speed sensors a and B on the side of the transmission. Just re replace them all. Clutch temperature too high. If you've got an obvious issue where something's slipping, swap the clutch actuators, see if that transfers. Um, that'll determine whether or not there's a stuck clutch actuator causing the clutch to overheat. But odds are, just go on ahead and tear the transmission down. Inspect the clutch and apply components. Probably replace everything, including the actuators for that. 2831, 2832, 2835, all these shift fork position sensor circuits, fault codes right here. There's more of them right here. Just, I'm going to go down the list of codes right here on the left here. For all these codes here, you're more than likely looking at a TCM issue. Make sure your grounds are clean. Make sure your battery and alternator are working all right. Clear the codes out and, and see if they come back. But yeah, the shift fork actuators are the two motors built into the TCM, so that's more than likely what you're looking at here, a TCM issue. Okay, mechanical codes here. Clutch A, disengagement time. Clutch A, stuck engaged. Clutch B, disengagement time. And clutch B, stuck engaged. There's the codes listed on the left there. More than likely, you're going to need clutch forks and a clutch for, that, for these codes here. But you can get the clutch reset tool and try to... Uh, Turn the clutch, make sure the fork feels okay. Upper and lower clutches. I have videos for all this stuff I'm talking about. If you're not sure where to find the video, let me know in the comments below and I'll link you to the right video. Now, if you have a seizing clutch actuator, that can also cause these codes. So you can swap the upper and lower actuator, see if the code transfers. But yeah, first thing I think when I see these codes is a seizing clutch fork or a seizing slave cylinder bearing. P287B, shift fork calibration not learned, most likely one that being a TCM issue. However, if you go through the relearn procedure and it and it's timing out on the neutral command, then you may have broken shift drum stops inside the transmission, which you would need a new case for that. You, you may also notice a ticking sound from the transmission with this code. That would also point out a shift drum stop sheared. You can pull the TCM out and turn the upper uh, clock gear behind the TCM where it goes in. Uh, try to get, turn it to its stop. Make sure it comes to a stop and doesn't go any further. If it just keeps spinning, then you know you have a broken shift drum stop. If you have broken shift drum stops, you may have another code in tandem with that last code I just showed. Sometimes it'll be a TCM. Sometimes it'll be a broken shift drum stop. It just just depends. It's, it's a 50-50 shot, I'd say. Other than tearing the transmission down and inspecting the shift drum stops, your only other option would be trying a TCM first. But um, if you're doing the relearn, like I said, for the clutch, and it's timing out where it says neutral command relearn, 
something along those lines, then that's pointing at an issue with the shift drum stops. Okay, that is a comprehensive list of every issue I've ever seen uh, code-wise on a DPS-6. I'll, I'll go, go over the um, things that don't necessarily set codes now. Obviously, there's the shutter issue. The clutch shutters, you can drive it hard, for, and it'll mitigate the shutter for a while. But uh, for a permanent repair, you want to replace the clutch to get rid of shutter. Well, permanent, you know what I mean. It'll probably go twenty or 30,000 miles, depending on how you drive, before it starts shuttering again. But that's as permanent as you're going to get for a shutter. Now, let's say you're driving down the highway, you let off the gas, and it completely just loses engagement and goes down to idle, and you hit the accelerator pedal to move again, and it's just revving. And that happens like once in a great while, every month or two, while you're on the highway, maybe. You may also notice a little bit of a flare when you let off the throttle and reapply. Replace upper and lower actuators, both, both clutch actuators, and see if that fixes it. Odds are it will. If it doesn't, then I believe you have a clutch issue. Something very, very common I see is when the car is cold and you, like, first thing in the morning, you start it and you start accelerating and there's a little bit of a hesitation going into second gear, but not enough to really be concerned about. Every time I've had someone complain about that, I've replaced the clutch by itself and that's fixed it. And once again, it's just a little bit of a hesitation going into second until it warms up, then it goes away. I think only a few times I've seen it where it, gets a little bit concerning but normally that's just something you live with it's just a quirk of these clutches here if you have a 2016 focus built after the end of i want to say april of 2016 or you have a 2017 and 2018 model focus the dual clutch automatic and like once or twice a year or maybe more frequent just occasionally you go and you put it in reverse or drive and it doesn't move and either either reverse or drive, but then it just starts working fine again for for a few weeks or whatever. Replace both clutch actuators, upper and lower actuators. That will fix that. Definitely use OEM parts on this stuff here that I'm talking about. Don't get uh, cheap uh, made in China or made in Taiwan, you know, overseas cheap products. I mean, there's got to be a reason they're so cheap. I would definitely get OEM parts for this. You don't want one of these parts to strand you. Um, so on certain 2012 model focuses, I believe, after you program a TCM and you uh, go to start it and drive it, it ha might have a tra traction control light stuck on with no codes, which is kind of strange, you might think, but just uh, turn the car off, unhook the battery for 10 minutes, uh, plug the battery back up, and it'll go away. And once again, I'm going to reiterate something else. If you've got mechanical clutch codes saying that the clutch is stuck applied or has performance issues with applying, but your clutch fork feels fine, you don't have any electrical codes like with an actuator for the TCM, and you swap the actuators and it didn't transfer over, then I would say that you have a slave cylinder that's the bearings come apart on it, it's locking up on the, the guide tube in there, and it's causing the clutch to stick. When in doubt and you're capable, just, you can pull the transmission out and check. Especially if the apply components for the clutch haven't been replaced in over 50 or 100,000 miles. Odds are something's wrong with that. Oh, that's everything that's coming into my head right now for what I've seen on these transmissions. Uh, people have asked about the fluid that you can use in this. Ford specifies the dual clutch transmission fluid, uh, part number XT11QDC. It holds between 1.7 and 1.8 quarts. It's about $50 a quart right now, which is kind of high. This is a dry clutch. The internals are, are pretty much the exact same as a regular auto manual transmission. So in my opinion, I haven't tried this, but I'm going to one day. Any manual transmission fluid, a lighter viscosity one, will, would work fine, I believe. Royal Purple Synchro Max, Redline MTL. AC Delco Synchro Mesh Friction Modified Semi-Synthetic should be a great fluid for it as well. Like I said, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to, and I look forward to it. Save a lot of money and put some nice fluid in it. All right, well, that covers everything I want to talk about, I think, so I hope this helps. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments below. I also have a Discord and Facebook group if you want to ask questions. Have a fantastic day. Good luck on your focus repairs, and... Uh, Thanks for watching.